The Mandela Effect, Alternate Realities, Alternate Memories. Today we will be going over and discussing the Mandela Effect as well as sharing with you some proof of alternate realities because so much is changing around you. You're the one living in a fantasy and the question is, are you awakened and paying attention to what's going on in the world around you? I hope so. Now let me preface this and say that although we're seeing all of these changes, which I'm going to prove to you in a second, that does not mean that the word of our Father will change. It will not change because he is never changing. But I will go over that later on in this video. But what you're about to see are so many examples of how the world around you is changing and altering. And what you're also going to see are some things that may be too shocking to see. Because like I said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. But the first example that I wanted to show you is in fact the example that you're looking at right now is the Berenstain Bears. Now the Mandela effect itself is when somebody remembers something being spelled or said a certain way but then somebody else remembers it being said or uh, spelled a certain way later on. So for example many people remember Berenstain Bears being spelled with an E as we see right here in this old TV guide it's spelled with the second E or the third E I should say. However now Nowadays, you see Baron Stain Bear spelled with an A, but many people do not remember that. And so the question is, how did that come about? And that is what we will be tackling, that and more to come. Stay tuned for more. One, do you remember, because I'm here at the Freelance Star at a newspaper article dated back from May 14th, 2003. And as you can see, it says Baron Stain Bears and Sunshine Kids, but it's spelled with an E. Huh, what happened? happen and it even says students took a field trip to the scholarship recently where the Berenstain Bears with an E read to the students about the exciting things you can learn to do instead of watching television. So back in 2003 it's obvious that it was the Berenstain Bears spelled with all E's and no A. I wonder what changed then? Why are we seeing the A then? So then why do we see today's Berenstain Bears book spelled with an A? As you can see, here's the A right here, and here's the A right here that's also in the author's names and the, and the ones who created the book. Why do we see it spelled with an A, even though back then it was apparently spelled with all E's in Berenstain with no A at all? What happened? How did that change come about? And in this video, I'm going to be explaining the bigger agenda behind all this and what's really going on, because for those of you who are saying, oh, well, it doesn't matter. What's the big deal? What's the point? I'm telling you there's something bigger going on and you need to see exactly what it is because the world around you is changing every single day. They, as in the elite, are literally letting you know what time it is and what time we're living in. The, the question, though, is are you paying attention to these things? I hope so because just like the title of this book says, we're going to be getting the truth today. Now, you may be wondering why I'm sure showing you a picture of Looney Tunes and the characters of Looney Tunes, everyone's favorite cartoon. Well, the reason I'm showing you this is because when you look at this closely, there's something very wrong with this picture. And what's wrong with this picture? Well, look at the second word. We have Looney, but we have Looney Tunes, and we have Tunes spelled T-U-N-E-S like iTunes. Huh, very interesting because I remember Looney Tunes being T-O-O-N-S because Tunes as in cartoon cartoons and Looney Tunes, which is a cartoon, so it would only make sense that it would have the double O, just like it has the double O right here. That's what I remember it to be. So then where is this Tunes coming from? By the way, if you search Looney Tunes spelled T-O-O-N-S, you're not going to find much on that. I wonder why that's the case. Then do you remember it being spelled with two O's or do you always remember it being spelled like this? because you wouldn't be the only one who remembers that because I'm here at Amazon and as you can see it says Looney Tunes and this is a game that is from the Nintendo Wii. Now what's interesting is that it's spelled Looney Tunes right here T-O-O-N-S but when you look at the actual game it's spelled Looney Tunes T-U-N-E-S. Was this just a mistake here or is there something bigger going on? Which one do you remember? Because I'm here at some old newspapers and 
and we're going to be taking a look at old newspapers to see exactly the real truth. Now I'm here at the Bangor Daily News and this is from August 16th, 1991. Now it says, coming soon, animated look at Looney Tunes, but it's spelled with two O's. Did they make a mistake? And what's even more interesting about this is that if you look at the actual article, they spell it T-U-N-E-S. So what happened here? You can see it right there, Looney Tunes, but it's spelled differently than what it was over here. Was that just an honest mistake? Not to mention that it even mentions time travel in the article above it. Is that what's going on? Oh, we're starting to see the truth of what it is today, but what if I told you that this isn't the only newspaper that we're seeing this in? Because here I am at the Freelance Star, and this was back in 2005, actually, and it says, as you can see, Looney Tunes, but it says it has the two O's right here. So where is the T-U-N-E-S coming from? And even in the actual article, you see Looney Tunes with the two O's, Looney Tunes with the two O's, and Looney Tunes with the two O's. But that's not the only one because we see in New Straits Times, dated from 1991, we also see Looney Tunes with the two O's here too. And we see it again right there. So then why is it that all of these newspapers dated from different dates all have the two O's, but yet when you look up Looney Tunes today, you see it spelled T-U-N-E-S. Is there something else going on? Not to mention, but we're just getting started because here I am at the Victoria Advocate, and this was back from 2008, actually. As you can see, it's spelled Looney Tunes correctly, and it has Looney Tunes with the two O's. So obviously, not one, not two, not three, but four different newspapers remember it being Looney Tunes spelled with the two O's. But is that all? No, because I'm here at the Star News, dated from July 10th of 1994, as you can see right here, and they remember it being spelled Looney Tunes with the two O's as well. But when you look at the actual article, what does it say? It says Tunes, T-U-N-E-S, 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 right there. Was this a mistake? What's going on? But if we go to this one, the Spokesman Review from October 29th, 1992, we see Looney Tunes once again with the two O's. What? is really going on here. And the last example that I would like to show you for Looney Tunes comes from the Lawrence Journal World, which was dated back in August 18th of 2005. Now, if you scroll down, you'll see that they spelled the two Looney Tunes, T-O-O-N-S, just like Tiny Tunes, which is still spelled T-O-O-N-S. So if, if that's the case, and if all of these people remember it being spelled with two O's, why is it spelled something else today? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, and you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about soon to come later on in this video. Now, you may be wondering why I'm showing you some cereal boxes of Cap and Crunch, and why I'm showing you the old version of the cereal box as well as the new version. You may be thinking, oh, there's nothing to it, there's nothing to it. Well, I remember it being spelled something else. Was it always spelled this way or was it spelled a different way? Because I remember Captain Crunch cereal being spelled all the way out. I remember it being Captain Crunch as it all the way spelled out for the captain. And it looks like I would not be the only one remembering this because I'm here at Star News, dated back from an article of January 11th, 1995, that also spells out the whole thing. And you can even say Captain Crunch Chicken huh, or where are they getting that spelling from? They even have the Captain Crunch right there. So where is all the Captain with the apostrophe coming from if people back then don't even remember it? And what do you remember is the question. Now, I'm here at the Prescott Courier that was dated from September 27, 1989. And, and as you can see in this issue of the newspaper, you can see that they wrote down Captain Crunch cereal. They wrote it all the way out, Captain Crunch, 15-ounce peanut butter. So we know it's talking about the cereal. But when you look at the little box here, it says Captain Crunch. Did they write it wrong? Or what is really going on here? And it even says Captain Crunch with the apostrophe there. So then why would they need to write out Captain right there? But they're not the only ones who do that because I'm here at the Observer Reporter as well, dated back from June 14th, 1992. And as you can see, they also write Captain Crunch all the way out. But when you look at the box right here, it says Captain Crunch right there. Oh, but that's not all either because I'm here at the Gainesville Sun, dated back from 2003, and they too write Captain Crunch cereal all the way out. Something's going on. Somebody's changing things. Some entity 
entities are changing things. Now, I cannot take credit for finding this one, but I thought it was interesting because I was looking at some YouTube channels and spotted this one and wanted to go over it with you. But this is an article dated from Chicago from the Associated Press on April 30th, 1993. And as you can see, they spell out Captain Crunch all the way. You can see Captain Crunch right here. And you can see that it's spelled out from 1993. And this is the Associated Press. So they obviously would not make a mistake in the Associated Press or the AP, would they? But when you go to the actual CPSC website or the United States Consumer Product Safety Commission's website and when you see the actual halt that they had from the article that was back in 1993, you see that they spelled it cap in with the apostrophe. But yet we just looked at the article from the Associated Press and we saw that it was spelled cap 10. So what is really going on here? What is really the bigger issue here? Because like I said, if you're not seeing it, I hope you are because I'm giving you all these examples so that you can see yes the world around you is being altered little by little and you may be wondering well it doesn't matter well it's it's just the letter oh it's just an apostrophe what's the big deal the big deal is that so much is changing right before you right in front of your face and if you're not awakened to this stuff if you're not seeing it with both your eyes open you're just gonna blindly think that nothing's going on even though we wrestle not against flesh and blood I said so much much is going on so much is changing in the blink of an eye and I hope you are aware of these changes now you may be wondering why I'm showing you a picture of a JC Penney store huh because if you look at the spelling there are two E's in JC Penney but was it always spelled that way because I remember JC Penney being spelled with only one E and it turns out I would not be the only one because I'm here at some other newspapers and I'm gonna browse through these pretty quickly so that you can see them but as you can see from the Lakeland ledger that was dated back in November of 1994 you can see they also spelled it with JC Penny with only one E but they're not the only ones they're not the only ones who remember it being spelled that way because the Eugene Register Guard dated from 1982 they too spelled it JC Penny with one E as well as the hour dated back from 1982 they too spelled it with JC Penny with one E and they even had the rate the register mark next to it not to mention the Toledo uh, blade dated from 1973, not to mention the Pittsburgh Press from 1988 was spelling it with one E, and the St. Petersburg Times dated from 2007, they have JCPenney right there, and even the Milwaukee Sentinel, which was dated from 1991, right here, as you can see. But it's interesting, because when you look at this one, it has JCPenney right there, but when you look at the actual article, it has EY right here, EY right there, and EY over there. Some Somebody's changing things indeed. Something is going on. Something deeper is definitely going on here. Now, I've just shown you the examples for JCPenney, but I'm here at the Philippine Daily Inquirer back from October 18th, 2004. And the reason I'm here is because I'm showing you one that has to do with Skechers and Skechers shoes. Because in this article right here, you see the Skechers USA is spelled with a T right there. You can see the T right here, Skechers USA. But is it spelled like this today? And do you remember it being spelled with the T? Because I'm telling you something bigger is going on. You may be wondering why I'm at a blank page right now. And the reason I'm here is because I want to show you something that's going to blow your mind. Because I remember Skechers shoes being spelled with a T between the E and the C. But is it spelled that way today? Well, we're going to find out. Because when I press enter to this, this is what I get. Not only is the T taken away, but it says Skechers, and that is how it's spelled today. But I don't remember Skechers ever being spelled that way. I always remember the T, just like the newspaper that we saw dated back from 2000. And four, is something else going on? Now you may be asking yourself, why am I showing you this bottle of Vicks Medicine right here? Why am I even showing you this very old bottle right here? Because when you look at it, you start to notice something very interesting and suspicious about it, indeed. And what you start to notice is that, oh, it looks like Vicks, doesn't it? V-I-C-K apostrophe S, because that's how the company was back then. But what is it today? 
Here's another old bottle that I wanted to show you of that's showing you VIX. And as you can see right here, there's the apostrophe right there. So you may not be thinking anything about it. You may just be saying, well, what's the big deal? VIX, okay, whatever. What's the big deal? Well, what if I told you that there's something else going on? Because when you look at a bottle of VIX today, and when you see the bottle of VIX today, you start to notice something very disturbing. And what is that something? You do not see the apostrophe between the K and the S, just like you did in some of the other bottles. And I know some of you may be thinking, oh, well, maybe they just made a company change, or oh, maybe it was just a change in the company. Well, why didn't they announce that to all of us if they were going to make such a change to their company? Or did they do it subliminally? and did not tell you because even when you enlarge it and zoom in you see VIX but there's no apostrophe right there and the question is do you ever remember there even being an apostrophe there to begin with remember old newspapers do not lie and I'm here from 1975 at the Eugene Register Guard and as you can see they remember VIX being spelled with an apostrophe right there but when you go to the Lottie News Sentinel you were, and we're back in 1971 April 7th to be exact they also too have the apostrophe between the K and the S but they're not the only ones because the Argus Press dated from 1974 also has the apostrophe between the K and the S but if you enlarge this a little bit more you actually see that on the box there is no apostrophe at all so why would they even write the apostrophe right there from 1974 if in 1974 there was no apostrophe unless something else changed but they're not the only ones because I'm here at the St. Petersburg Times which was dated from March 9th of 1972 and as you can see they too have the apostrophe right there in VIX so what is really going on? Something weird is happening right before us. Something strange is happening indeed. Oh, but we're just getting started. We haven't even gotten to the good part yet. Now, I'm sure many of us have heard of this organization known as Chick-fil-A, but like I said, something strange is definitely going on because which logo do you remember it being? Because today, it's Chick-fil-A spelled with a K, but I most certainly remember it being spelled without a K. And so which logo do you mostly resemble and which one do you remember? Because remember, although your brain does play tricks on you, your memory does not. We all have memories for a reason. I remember this one but which one do you remember because even my fitness pal remembers it being chick-fil-a without the k and just spelled c-h-i-c dash f-i-l dash a oh but they're not the only ones because i'm here at huffington post comedy from a post that was done back on february 14th 2011 and they too this person remembers it being spelled chick-fil-a without the k too and all throughout the article you even see that it's spelled chick-fil-a without the K. Are the memories playing tricks on them? Because when you look it up today, it does have the K, but where did the K come from? Because as you see, they spell it Chick-fil-A, but it's interesting because this was written on February 14, 2011. Well, another post came from Huffington Post, actually, that was written on February 2nd, so a couple of days before, and they spell it with the K. So did they get it wrong? Did the person before get it wrong? Were they just spelling it wrong on purpose? What is really going on here? But the Herald Journal remembers it to be spelled without a K because I'm here at an article dated from 1982 as of March 22nd. And as you can see, Chick-fil-A without the K right there as well. But even in 1990, they still remember it without the K because it's spelled right here, even here and right there as well, but not just them, because the Tuscaloosa News from 1994, they too spell it without the K. But right here, there's no K, but there's a K all throughout the article. So what happened? We see the K right there too, but the title is no K. What is going on here? And it's even interesting too, because if you look from the Calhoun Times, dated back from 2003, they remember it being spelled with C-H-I-K without a C there at all. And, and But if you look at the actual article you see Chick-fil-A the way that it's spelled today. Huh, what is really going on?
Enough about chicken. How about we move on to something even yummier, which are sandwiches? Because here I am at Quiznos, and as you can see, this is the very first picture of the first Quiznos Subs restaurant that was open back in 1975, and I'm showing you the actual picture. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is because in this picture dated from 1975, you can see Quiznos right here, and you can see that there's an apostrophe between the O and the S. But when you look at Quiznos today, and when you look at the restaurant's today, you see that there's no apostrophe at all. What happened? I most certainly remember Quiznos having an apostrophe between the O and the S, and it turns out I would not be the only one to remember that because I'm here at the Spokesman Review from September 30th, 1998, and as you can see, there's the apostrophe right there, and you can see it right there as well. But if we keep going with the Lakeland Ledger, dated from June of 2001, they too have the apostrophe between the O and the S right here, and the Ocala Star Banner, they also have an article dated from December of 2002, with Quiznos being spelled with an apostrophe, as well as in dated in November 2002, right here with Quiznos between the O and the S, and apostrophe right there, and even Lottie News, which was dated back in May of 2002, we also see Quiznos with an apostrophe as well and we also see it here in this article so we see all of these articles and newspapers they all remember it being spelled with an apostrophe but when you look at Quiznos today and when you look at the website for Quiznos today you don't even see an apostrophe anymore see where did the apostrophe go you don't even see it what's going on and like I said for some of you who may say oh it's just nothing or oh it's not a big deal or what's the big deal it's just like that it's always been like like that I'm telling you there's something else going on and you need to see all of these examples and see exactly what time it is and the time you're living in because if you're not paying attention to this stuff you're just gonna think it's nothing you're just gonna think oh I could just pass it off oh it doesn't matter oh whatever who cares oh my goodness it's time you wake up now and see exactly what you need to see I'm going to show you a few more examples of the Mandela effect and then we're going to to go over the bigger agenda and just who is responsible behind all of this. Now I'm here showing you herbal essences and as you can see it's the shampoo and is this is the shampoo in German but it's also available in English but as you can see it says herbal essences spelled with an S at the end of essences. Huh, I don't remember it being spelled with an extra S. Do you remember that? Because the Spokane Daily Chronicle, dated from February 2nd of 1981, they don't remember it being spelled like that because they have Herbal Essence and even shows a bottle of Herbal Essence from the same company, Clairol. So they don't remember that, but neither does the Deseret News, dated from October 24th, 1979. They have Clairol Shampoo Herbal Essence, Herbal Essence, Herbal Essence without the extra S. So when we go to the website then, why is it spelled with an additional S even though I've just proven that it was not originally spelled with an additional S because you see Herbal Essences, did they just change that? Did, was it a company move and they didn't tell anybody? Why are we seeing all of these changes with all these companies and they're not even announcing their changes let alone letting us know of these changes that they're doing with these companies? Is it all a big coincidence? Is it all just happening for no reason? Or is there something else going on? But all this Mandela effect talk is definitely making me hungry. Do you remember Gorton's Fish Sticks? As you can see here on the box right here, do you remember this company named Gorton's Fish Sticks and all of their seafood products that they make? Oh, I most certainly do not remember Gorton's, but I do remember another one. Because I do not remember Gorton being spelled with a T, but rather I remember Gordon being spelled with a D and all of the seafood products being spelled with a D. So where did the sudden change come from? Because I'm here at Spring Hope Enterprise from a newspaper dated from July 6, 1978, and it turns out they spelled Gordon with a D as well. But why do we see today Gorton being spelled with a T? Was it a sudden change or is something else going on? Mood for some chips. Well, I sure am. How about a bag of Lay's classic potato chips? Sounds good to me, doesn't it? Yum, yum. Only there's something very wrong with this because I don't remember Lay's being spelled like that. In fact, I don't remember that apostrophe at all. Do you?
In fact, neither does the Gainesville Sun dated from June 10th of 1991 because as you can see in one of their articles, they have Lay's potato chips, but where is the apostrophe? If Lay's has an apostrophe, as we just saw on the bag today, then why does this newspaper not have the apostrophe between the Y and the S? Unless there really never was the apostrophe back then and they just recently added it. Huh, what is really going on here? Are you starting to see the bigger picture? I hope so. Another one I wanted to go over with you that's been getting a lot of attention too is Kmart because many people remember Kmart being spelled with the dash between the K and the M and many people also remember the M being capitalized in Kmart and other newspapers would agree because I'm here at Lottie News again from 1981 as of August 6th and as you can see here's Kmart with the dash right here and here's another Kmart with the dash right there and same with the Toledo Blade that's dated at the same time, 1981, and you can see K-Mart right there and K-Mart right there as well as the Walker County Messenger dated from February 8th of 2002. And you can see K-Mart right there, K-Mart right there. Now in this one, the M is smaller, but as you can see, there is a dash between the K and the Mart, but do you see that today? Or are we just seeing things? Because I'm here at the actual Kmart website and when you go to the Kmart website, it leads you right here, but there's no dash between them. And not only that, but the K and the M are small letters or lowercase and there's a giant K above them. But I don't remember Kmart being spelled that way. I remember the dash between the K and the M. And when you even try to go to k-mart.com, it leads you right here. What is really the case? And why is it, why did they even make this change and didn't even tell anybody unless that was the whole purpose and the whole point so that you would not know the truth. Now many people remember the TV show or the television sitcom commonly known as Different Strokes and in fact I remember this TV show myself and as you can see here it's you can see the complete second season of Different Strokes but there's something really wrong with this when you really look at it especially for those of us who really remember the show and remember it coming on. Well, there is an apostrophe between the F and the R, and do you remember an apostrophe ever being there, or was there no apostrophe, and was it always spelled out as different strokes? Let's find out. Because I most certainly remember different strokes being spelled with an E and different all the way spelled out. And so does the Daily News from November 9th of 1978. And you can see different strokes right there and different strokes right here. But if you go down to the TV listing from November 10th of 1978, if we go all the way down, all the way down, and we'll see that it has different strokes right there, but it has the apostrophe right there, right in this example right here. But when you go back up here and how they wrote it it has different strokes all the way spelled out so what is really going on how was it originally spelled is there something bigger going on in the works that you don't know about I'm going to go over a few more examples of the Mandela effect and then I'm going to tell you the bigger agenda because I know you're eager for truth now the reason I'm here is because I'm showing you Oscar Mayer and the company and Oscar Mayer wieners now it's interesting because it's spelled Oscar Mayer M A a Y E R, but was it always spelled like that? And how do you remember it being spelled before? Well, not exactly, because I'm here at the Deseret News, and as you can see from an article dated back from July 27th, 1997, it says protesters also heckled at Oscar Mayer contest. But look at how Mayer was spelled back then. Was that an honest mistake? As you can see, Oscar Mayer was spelled with an E, and this is how I remember it being spelled with no A at all. But but this wouldn't be the only journal that spelled it that way back then because I'm here from one that was dated all the way back as early as the 1950s that even spelled Meyer with an E and not the A. As you can see, Oscar Mayer, and it's talking about the company because we see bacon right here. So it's obviously talking about the meat company, and this comes from the Milwaukee Journal dated back from July 1st of 1959. But they also uh, dated this too back in 1986 
Hits, where they say Oscar Mayer with an E slashes jobs in Chicago. What do you remember? But you know what's odd about all this is because when you look at the actual article here, you see that it has an A right there in Meyer, but in the title, it has an E. And that's not the only place we saw that. We saw that with J.C. Penny. We saw that with a few other examples that I've gone over earlier. And we see it again here where the title has the original spelling, but the actual article itself has something completely different. Was this just an honest mistake or is there something bigger going on here? Here we are at the Schultz Museum website. And as you can see, this is talking about Charles M. Schultz, the guy who created Peanuts and many other cartoons. Now, as you can see, he was a devoted cartoonist. Now that is correct. However, many people do not remember his last name being spelled that way. In fact, many people remember his last name being spelled with the T between the L and the Z. What do you remember being true? Because according to the Dispatch newspaper dated from February 22nd, 1995, here's a cartoon of the Peanuts, but what do they have written here? They have Charles Schultz with the T right here, but they're not the only ones because here we are at the Times News that was dated all the way back to October of 1975. Here we have Charles Schultz spelled with the T, but just like we had again, other examples, the actual newspaper itself says Schultz spelled without the T. And we saw that examples with J.C. Penn Vix and even Oscar Mayer, which we just went over, but even in the Bryan Times in December 16th, 1999, here we see the title with the T right here in Charles Schultz, but when you look at the actual article write up, it doesn't have the T at all. Was this just an honest mistake? Is this concerning you? Should you be concerned? I hope so because I am because I'm here at Evil Knievel's website and I'm sure many of us have heard of Evil Knievel the daredevil indeed and many of us have heard of him and know of him. Well, I know of him too and I see his name spelled right here, Evil Knievel. However, was it always spelled with an E or was it spelled with an I to spell evil? What's going on here? Now, the Ocala Star Banner, which was dated from September 22nd of 1990, as you can see in this article here, it says Evil Knievel, which was spelled with the I. But then why is this spelled with an E today? What? Why the sudden change in his name? Did he want a name change and didn't want to tell anybody? Just like Oscar Mayer and Charles M. Schultz, even though the, they are dead? Huh, very interesting and suspicious indeed. And as you can see in the actual newspaper, it even spells out his name, Evil E. V I L something evil is going on all right but as you can see in the Ellensburg Daily Record from 1984 you see the evil can evil is the title with the I right here but when you look at the actual article once again you see E V E L just like the other examples with Charles M Schultz Oscar Mayer Vicks and J C Penny but that's not the only one that does that because we see it with the hour as well dated from as early as 2005 now what's interesting is we see in the title again evil spelled with an i but right here we see evil spelled with an e was that an honest mistake and not just this one but this one as well what was that just an honest mistake that they do that unintentionally or is there some real evil actually going on but enough about evil. Let's talk about Reba McIntyre, shall we? Because as you can see, many of us have heard of her and many of us know her and know the work that she has done and the singing that she has done. But as you can see, Reba McIntyre, that is her name. Huh, did she get a name change? Because I do not remember that being her last name, nor do I remember that being the spelling of her last name. Are celebrities just getting random name changes and without knowing about it, just like they get Get plastic surgeries? Are they getting name changes and name surgeries as well? Is that what's in style these days in Hollywood? Or is there something else? Because when I look at an issue from the Gadsden Times dated from March 15th of 1992, and I look at some of the hairstyles that were done back then, but when I look at the names, as you can see, here's Reba, and it says McIntyre, spelled I-N-T-Y-R-E, and not McIntyre as it was originally spelled back on the Wikipedia site from M-C-E-N-T-I-R-E. -E. Huh, that's a big difference, isn't it? Which one is correct? Because this is the one I remember. Member. So then why are they showing us a different one? And if she got a name change, why isn't she being vocal about it? What's going on?
Now, before I tell you what's really going on, I just want to share a few more examples of the Mandela effect that many people have experienced and memories that people have experienced. Now, the first one is the word dilemma because many people remember dilemma being spelled with an, a letter N, but today it's spelled with two letter M's. And then also the, the company Febreze, many people remember Febreze being spelled with two E's between the R and the Z, but now there's only one. Also, Jiff and Jiffy peanut butter, many people remember it being Jiffy peanut butter and not Jiff, as well as Forrest Gump. In the movie, people remember the famous quote being, life is like a box of chocolates. Well, when you look at the movie today, and I urge you to watch this movie, and rewatch it, you'll see that it will say life was like a box of chocolates, as well as the original Star Wars movie. It says, I am your father, but now it says, Luke, I am your father. So there was obviously a change with that as well, just like Mirror Mirror and Magic Mirror. And there are many more examples and even geographical locations as well. So there are so many changes. Now, what is it really going on? Is it just our memory playing tricks on us? Or is there time travel involved with this? Because remember, you're the one living in a fantasy. And I know this may sound crazy, but trust me, that is exactly what's going on is time travel through Harp and CERN, but more notably CERN. Yes, you should be concerned about this because they can go back in time and change and manipulate certain things into making them seem as though it was never even changed and making it seem as though these changes that you're seeing are blending in when it is just an alternate reality because they went back in time to change things and you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. Now, it's no surprise whatsoever that you're seeing Hollywood, or should I say Hollywood, pushing these themes of time travel in certain mainstream movies and TV, film, video games, all over the place. You're seeing the theme of time traveling and going back in time. And most recently, you see the example of time travel in Alice Through the Looking Glass, which is the sequel to Alice in Wonderland. And as you can see on the bottom, it says it's time for a little madness. And this movie was just released. Release. Now, I have just recently seen this movie, and without spoiling it, I'm going to tell you there is a lot of going back in time and time traveling and the theme of time, and the theme of time is up. You see that all over the place throughout the movie. You see it embedded throughout the movie. It's one giant parable, but that's not the only place that you're seeing time and time traveling. But that's not the only place that we're seeing the themes of time traveling and going back in time and reversing time because we also see it in movies such as 13 Going on 30, but we also see it in mainstream movies such as Steven Spielberg's Back to the Future. But we're even seeing the theme of time traveling and going back in time and re reversing time and undoing time in Disney Channel movies as well, even in the Disney Channel original movie known as Minutemen. And in this movie, it's even even admitted that the FBI and other alphabet soups even admit to the U.S. government conducting time travel experiments, and it's even admitted in this movie, The Minutemen. Oh, but this movie is for kids. I'm telling you, it's time to wake up and see the bigger agenda. Yes, your U.S. government have been conducting time travel experiments, and they can go back in time and manipulate time any single way they can, but they're getting some help from some entities, that's for sure, and you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. What am I talking about? I'm talking about we wrestle not against flesh and blood, CERN and time traveling. That is what I'm talking about because Yahoo willing, I'm going to do a video on this in depth, but there have been many operations and many time traveling operations and projects that your U.S. government, that your lovely government have been conducting that whistleblowers have even talked about and have exposed. Projects such as Project Pegasus and Project Looking Glass. Now it's interesting that they would name a project known as Project Looking Glass, huh, just like the movie Alice in Wonderland or Alice Through the Looking Glass, which is all about going back in time. Is that a coincidence? Not really. And where are they getting help from? Whether you want to believe it or not, they are getting help from the fallen angels, from the demigods, from the demons. That is where they're getting their help from because with the help of the demons and the demigods, they're exchanging their technologies, but they're also going back in time 
time and conducting time traveling experiments to mess with your head and play with your head. And we're already seeing the beginning blocks and the beginning stages of it, how they're going back in time and changing and reversing letters around, uh, changing commas and changing apostrophes and adding apostrophes here and taking apostrophes there. We're already seeing the beginning blocks. And you may be wondering why they are doing this because they are letting you know what time it is. Remember, you're the one living in a fantasy. I know this is hard to believe for many of you, but this is just the darn truth. And you see the truth for what it is. And it's time you see not only the truth, but what time we're living in. Now, although we see all of this time traveling and all of this manipulating, and we see how Satan's manipulating the world around us, just know that he cannot manipulate the word of our father, even though the word of our father has been tampered with because they took out the Hebrew names of our father, Yahuwah, and our son, Yahusha, and all the Hebrew and replaced it with paganisms, but just know his word will never change. But it's important that you see the world around you, what's going on, and what time it is. Please seek Yahuwah and his true son Yahusha because time is up. This is Truth Unveiled. Shalom.